Oh boy, well now this is exciting. What have we got for you here today? What else but the UNC Season 7 Draft League Power Rankings. Oh my goodness, so exciting. Um, so for those unfamiliar, because I know we have some new people, the Power Rankings are basically when I'll just take a look at all the teams before the draft starts and kind of just give my loose opinions on them, like what some of their strengths and weaknesses are. Let, meant less as a critique and more just uh, filler content to kind of listen to, maybe see, realize things about teams you may have not realized. I don't know, something like that. Loosely entertaining. Who knows? But um, yeah, don't take anything I'm saying as gospel just because I obviously have my own opinions, right? But um, just based on what I might think and some things that might be good or bad about a team. Uh, yeah. Uh, rambly introduction out of the way. Let's get right into it. So this time we have two divisions. We have the gold division and the silver division. Uh, I suppose it would make sense for me to start with the silver. Yeah, no, why not do that? And um, as you can see, when we start in the silver, we have Philip, who has still not finished his team. And actually, as of this recording, people can still make trades. I know these aren't final, but I do like to put these out before the trades end, just in case I say something that makes somebody go, oh, wow, I should really change this or that. I mean, I'm sure that never happens, but just in case that happens, I like to do this earlier. So, yeah, Philip's team isn't done. Not going to comment on it um, too much. I mean, it looks good. Solid foundation, but uh, please, please finish the team, Philip. Please. <laughs> All right. So our first team we'll actually be covering is Jose of the NP Capri Sun team. So Jose usually drafts Sun, but this time, as you can see, he actually went kind of the opposite direction. I'm not sure what inspired him to do that. Um, he went with Rain. Very interesting uh, change of pace. I'm still weather, obviously. A lot of similarities in how those two are played, but a lot of entirely different Pokemon, basically, right? Um, so we can see he's got Pelipper's as Rain Setter, he's got a lot of powerful abusers like Kingdra and Crawdont. He's got Rillaboom to take out other bulky water types, always a good thing, as Cavalier to abuse the reduction to fire damage, Bear Tick can be a swift swimmer, so on and so forth. Nido King's already taken out Electric. Um, I think this is a solid Rain team, I think Rain's always kind of solid if you pick the right things. It's kind of hard to make a bad Rain team with things like Pelipper and Kingdra, like the rest can just kind of supplement that main core of just blowing shit out of the water. Um... In terms of weaknesses looking at this team, I don't see too many problems. I suppose it could be a little stronger against something like Electric, right? Because it's only way to hold off against Electric are like Rillaboom and Nidoking. And that's not bad, but they're both not too bulky. Magneton, I guess, resists Electric, but it's really not that bulky in itself. But you can tell I'm kind of grasping at straws here to try to think of an overwhelming criticism, right? Because this kind of rain, especially, it's not... You're not going to find a glaring weakness, really. Um, I don't think any of his Pokemon outside of the main Rancor are too intimidating. But um, I definitely think, especially in the Silver Division, that will still be more than enough for him to wipe a lot of teams just with spamming out moves with Kingdra and Crawdon. So I hope people are well prepared and read up on how to <laughs> beat a rain team like that. Um, I see some good counters in some people's teams, but we'll see how that goes. So yeah, very solid team from Jose. Uh, maybe the best in the division. Um, it does have the usual shortcomings that come with rain, right? But... Um, you know, opposing weather or like just grass and electric types in general, but I still think it could be really strong. All right, next up we have Hannah of the Mystic Monsters. So Hannah's returning after uh, a de stunning debut last season, defeated Philip, complete, complete true win right there. No, don't ask questions. She just beat Philip, very impressive. Um, and that's all you need to know. And now she's back for the next season. And her team this time, obviously, she got to draft all her Pokemon, because last season we were mixing things up. That's why we didn't have any power rankings or anything like that. But, um, yeah, I do like a lot of the Pokemon she chose. A lot of strong offense right off the bat with Tapu Lele. Mega Beedrill goes wonderful with that, because the Psychic Terrain can block all the priority that threatens it. They can both lure and steals so and kind of chip them away for each other with, like, Focus Blast or Drill Run. Um, rounds out a little bit defensively with a lot of Pokemon that can take hits, which I like. Togekiss, Seismitoad, Appleton, even Rotom Frost to an extent. A lot of Pokemon that can take some hits, which is good. Um, in terms of weaknesses, um, there's some good momentum. I was going to say there's not enough momentum, but there's a good amount of momentum. You have Beedrill and Blaziken who can U-turn stuff in, which is nice. Um, Thievul can certainly work with the Psychic Terrain, Psychic Seed, Unburden. That's always nice. Um, yeah, I guess in terms of weaknesses, I would say maybe durability, obviously, isn't the bulkiest team. It's got bulk, but not a lot of recovery, right? The only Pokemon I see with really consistent recovery or easy recovery is, like, Appleton and Togekiss. 
I think that should be okay, though, because Hannah has the kind of team where even if it's not the fastest, they can still kind of beat you on offense and maybe, like, run weakness having berries on Pokemon to take hits and strike back, or things like Choice Scarf Tapu Lele being brought in by, like, U-turns from Blaziken and U-turns from Beedrill. Um, maybe finish sweep off with Choice Scarf Sandler. I think Hannah can do pretty well with this team. Um, it all comes down to kind of how the prep goes, I feel like, but it's definitely a solid team. All right. Next up, we have Yarn with the Vegas Volbeats, UNC Perennial Yarn. So Yarn also jumped on Jose's weather bandwagon, interestingly, and went with Sand. Certainly an interesting archetype to try there. You don't see as much of it now, especially not with Excadrill. So, excuse me. Especially not without Excadrill. But um, it's an interesting team. You've got Mega Mawile. I wouldn't say that's the first thing you think of with Sand, but whatever, just an amazing Pokemon, so you can't really fault it either way. Tyranitar forms the Sand, obviously. That's the Sand, uh, you know, setter. Landorus. You rarely see Landorus and Karnak get drafted without Sheer Forth. A lot of people just ignore it because they don't, they're like, oh, this is weaker than it can be, so I'm not sure what I want to do with it. Um, I would say it could be really good here. I need to see it in action, I suppose, but it's fast, right? It's got Stealth Rocks, it's got U-Turn, it's got Earth Power, it's got Knock Off, it's got all kinds of moves, good utility moves, and then just good attacks that will be boosted by Sand Force if they're Rock, Steel, or Ground. So that'll be interesting to see in a lot of setup like Swords Dance and Rock Polish. Um, Dracazult, just an amazing sand sweeper. Not much to say there. Can do whatever you want. Just a great sand sweeper. Um, from there, Yarn's team gets very interesting, right? Some of the things you do consider with sand is that usually sand abuse are very weak to like ground and water, grass, and the types they're weak to. I think he does a pretty good job of covering those. Maybe not as good as he could, but I think it's very good overall because you've got things like Mantine who can really great against most ground types, and of course, Landers can do that too. Fireplum doesn't resist it, but still grass at least. Um,. Yeah, he's got Vileplume for water and Mantine for water, because especially Mantine with Water Absorb, that's fantastic. Um, Type Null's maybe generally taking some hits. Again, Mantine and Vileplume for the fighting weakness. I feel like I'm a broken record. You get the idea. He covered his weaknesses with Mantine and Vileplume, and that's a fine way to do it. They cover a lot of Sans weaknesses there. Um, some of his lower picks I don't feel like are particularly that synergistic, but that's fine. They can still do stuff. Type Null's just a good tank. Rotom's pretty nice. Bergmite is cute, I guess. I like Magmar. Don't really know what's going to do here, but I like Magmar. Um, because he has fire coverage and things like Dracazult and Tyranitar, and even Mawile anyway, but, um, yeah, I'll be interested to see how this team goes, I just really haven't played Sand that long, or I feel like I can't speak too definitively on how it'll do, but, um, I'll be interested to see, this is an interesting team to follow, and it looks strong, at least, certainly on paper, so, that'll be exciting. Next up, we have Rishi, he didn't name his team, uh, I'm gonna give him a name right now, let's call his team the Rishiville Rishinators? I guess that's not really a Pokemon. Uh, Rish, Rish, Re, Remoraid, Rishiville, Remoraid, I don't know. Remoraid, he likes Remoraid, okay? I don't know. Rishiville, Remoraids, let's go. So let's see, Rishi starts off with a Dragman core here. Obviously a nice little base, classic core with uh, Latios and Magnezone. So Magnezone can, you know, trap steals, remove fairies. So Latios can spam Draco Meteor, so I don't worry too much about using coverage. He backs it up with a lot of base defensive options. He's got Donphan, he's got Delmise. Um, he's also got Spinda, so that's a lot of spinners. Clearly, removing hazards is important to him, and that's fair, because he probably don't want Latios having to run Defog more than it wants to. Um, but his, def his defense isn't that strong overall, but that's fine. The offense more than makes up for it. You know, you look at attackers like um, Latios, you look at strong uh, Arshifu, uh, Rapid Strike, Magnezone. You can sweep it all off with uh, Maltrace. Braylon certainly fantastic for putting things to sleep to take advantage of them. So yeah, just a lot of good things to hit hard. Uh, a solid team, I would say. Maybe one of my favorites in the division. Uh, maybe not as strong as Jose's, but you do have a little more options, more versatility, not being uh, settled to rain, right? So that's something I like about it. Um, Charmeleon, I don't know why he's there, but, you know, I'm not gonna... <laughs> I should I should stop complaining about the E tiers, because I'm the one who makes them all, like, pretty terrible. So I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna call any E tiers from this point onward. I know uh, it kind of just makes sense to pick something funny, because they all suck. So, all right, moving up next, to uh, Aiden, Naughty Boston. I mean, um, with the Pandemic Pichus. All right, let's see. This is a fantastic team, I would say. Dragapult's just one of the best Pokemon in draft ever to have, just because it's such a good as, like, a fast pivot or revenge killer. You can give it, you know, whatever speed tier you need and just have lots of uh, leftovers EVs to work with, lots of coverage. 
Uh, his team, that's one of those things where it's not that defensive on the whole because my low ticket and uh, Figarathon are so fantastic in defense. He doesn't really need anything else. And then he's got great offense like Thunderish Theory and Terran Tarmega, just great sleepers who could clean up. Maybe supported by Orbital screens. Uh, he gets some Baton Pass stuff going with Ninja so I don't think it was really a good recipient besides maybe Mega Tyranitar. But I'm um, just a fantastic team. Uh, Aiden should have a lot of options here for what he wants to do week to week. Um, and it's, yeah, yeah, I like this team. Uh, I'll be interested to see how Aiden uses it. I know he's newer to join this season, but um, I think he'll be able to at least achieve some success with this team. It's a fantastic team. Uh, all right. Let's see. Next up we have Loon. Uh, Loon, I like this team. Loon with the Land of Toons. Um, so interesting first pick with Gothitelle, right? Gothitelle's really good because it can trap whatever. It can use like Charm, uh, Confide stuff to just trap whatever and take out for the rest of the team. Could be really nice if you want to do, say, like a Calm Mind Sleep with Clefable or Bulk Up Sleep with Corviknight. Maybe take out a bother some like Electric type uh, could stop Corviknight or like a Steel type that could top Clefable. Um, just, yeah, a lot of good stuff here. Good, strong defense just with Clefable, Gastrodon, Corviknight alone, right? You've got a pretty unbreakable defense. A lot of good offense or hazard options too. Maybe the one Achilles heel uh, here would be... Um, not the best as removal, so Corvine's probably going to be settled to defog a lot of the time. But that should be fine, because they've still got um, things like Taunt Frost, Last Taunt Person, they can lead off with the control hazards, or just like, you know, Clayville has Magic Guards, doesn't really care anyway, maybe you could run like Heavy Duty Boots and Salazzle and some other stuff and just stomach the rocks. Maybe stack spikes to compel the opponent to remove stuff. But um, yeah, aside from that slight problem, I think this is a pretty fantastic team, especially for a first draft, so I think... So I think uh, Loon's got a pretty good shot here. All right, next up we have Brendan, another newcomer with the Trump family. I'll be you know, not interested to see uh, the nicknames for that team. Um, so it's kind of an interesting team. I wouldn't say this is one of the strongest in the division, but um, I think there's a lot of potential here, right? You've got a lot of good bulk with Celesteela, Volcano, and Toxpex. All we to Electric, sure, but you've got Muzdil to take care of that. A lot of unconventional picks. A lot of these Pokemon you just don't see often in draft leagues. Not because they're bad, but just because their uses aren't don't tend to fit in as well as with other cores. But I do think things fit in together pretty well here. You've got some horrifying uh, hyper offense mode with Mimikyu and Alakazam. And um, yeah, once again, I think that's removal is a little weak. Uh, at least uh, Brendan's got two defoggers with Volcania and Articuno, but they're both very line heavy duty boots. So he will need to keep their uh, heavy-duty boots on and avoid knockoffs. He wants to keep hazards off the field. But thankfully, his team's not too hazard weak anyway. Um, yeah, because Alkin's got Magic Guard. Celesteel and Toxpex can kind of work around it, with, especially with Generator. Um, yeah, it's an interesting team. I'm excited to see how it does. Um, yeah. No glaring weaknesses I can see. Mm, I guess Crocorock being the only dark and having, like, he has, like, what, two ghosts and a psychic. So I guess you could call a team... A little weak to Ghost and Dark, actually, because there's no real resistance for them. Besides Krokorok, which can work either way. It's got okay stats, but they're not that good. So I'll have to be careful around those types of Pokemon, like Dragapult, maybe. But um, still fantastic. Still good options. I'll be interested to see how they work together. Very good for a first attempt. All right, now we move up to the gold team over here. This is where we get to the real, the no-lifers, the, the kissless crowd. The gold division, the, the, bet, the creme de la creme. Uh, this very mediocre coffee shop. <laughs> Let's see. So we've got, uh, first up, the Pyongyang Kling Klang, piloted by Sean. That's me. I'm not going to talk too much about my own team because it's a waste of everyone's time. <laughs> uh, I'd say the, obviously the main problem with my team is it's not that fast, right? It's kind of slow. I mean, I mainly just picked Pokemon I wanted to use, like Melmetal. I used Heracross and Forever. Reggie Drago is just cool. I love him. But, um, yeah, so I was going to try to do, like, Trick Room, Thunder Wave stuff to hopefully make up for that. But, um... Yeah, I'll probably be taking hits more than going first, right? That'll be the main idea. So hopefully that works out for me. Trying to just trying to hit hard, basically, while also being able to take a hit. Nothing too complicated. Classic bulky offense. All right, next up with the Among Us. Great name for a team. We have Ken. Ken's team is very cool. Um, you obviously can see Spectre right off the top. Uh, that's a big uh, red flag usually. Uh, just for uh, you know you're gonna be in a bad for, for uh, you know you're gonna be in for a bad time. Um, but if you look down, right, you see his offense options diminish quite a good bit. I mean, Typhlosion and Manectric are okay, Marowak's all right, but so mainly Spectres we're going to have to worry about from Ken from offense. But then obviously what you really got to worry about is his amazing stall core, just pure bulk with like Deoxys Defense, Florida's Agron Mega, just Mandy Buzz, man, they're just going to take a lot of hits, no problems removing or setting hazards, right? Um, simply fantastic. Um, but I think if you can manage Spectre, perhaps, and you can find a way to break through those walls, maybe if you find a good stall breaker to use, 
Um, yeah, then you should be able to get through Ken somehow. Maybe. That's a really good, it's just a really good line of defense he has. And I don't see a lot of common weaknesses. Um, one of the cheap ones I was go for is Ghost and Dark, so they're usually hard to resist. But he's even got those covered. So, yeah, I don't, you'll have to be clever to get around this team. Um, yeah, but at least you won't have to worry about being blown out of the water with too many uh, powerful moves. You just gotta win the War of Attrition against the Stall Pokemon. All right, so next up we have Ron. Uh, didn't have a name, so uh, let's make one up. Let's go with the Hydra. Ron, I don't. Hydra. Hydra's not, but whatever. Let's go with the Hydra Ron Hydragons. That's a name, right? All right, Ron. And Ron did finish his team just today. Better late than never, but um, it's a fantastic team. His usual Hydreigon momentum spam stuff, which is just, I can't fault, very good. And it's just amazing, because the Hydreigon's got momentum, Slowbird's got momentum, good momentum with Teleport. you got Primary Flip Turn, you've got Persian Lop and a U-Turn, and you got Rotom uh, Heat, Volts, which everything's got momentum, it feels like. And the things that don't, Extra Journal and Gigalith, are forming a tight little, uh, tight little uh, sand sweep core you can do on his own, too. So that's just simply fantastic. Um... Maybe the team's a little slow, I guess you could say. Uh, Persian's the main thing rounding out the speed is over 100, which is, you know, Persian kind of sucks, but it's still not nothing and whatever. That's kind of a minor complaint. Uh, just a fantastic team. I think it's probably the best in the division looking at it, I want to say. Just really good. So hopefully Ron can maybe take the championship this time. I'd hope to see it because even if you can, you know, I mean, the durability's a little weaker on his team, but it's, he's still got really regenerators. He's still got Pokemon with Recover, like, uh, not Recover, but Pokemon with Roost, like Hydreigon. Um... Yeah, and he can just, even if he's not, like, walling you forever, if he can just, most people can take a hit and just hit you really hard back. So, yeah, that'll be interesting to see. I think Ron's got a fantastic team. All right, next up we have Alfie. I'm still uh, crying and shaking from uh, my 6-0 loss to him the last season, but at least it's an Azumarill this time, so uh, and he did draft his own team. So this is Alfie with the Dreepy Drips, or I think somebody helped him, but anyway, helped him in a bad way. <laughs> it seems like he was trying to challenge himself. So let's see. Uh, Alfie does this thing sometimes where he'll pick more like defensive Pokemon, and but don't let him mislead. Don't let that mislead you. I feel like because he still usually goes even hard on hard hyper offense with those Pokemon. So he'll maybe use something like Pukamook or Slowbro Mega as like a pivot or hit him on top as a pivot. But to get back to his things that are really hitting you hard, like Landorus, Dragonite, Cloyster, a lot of setup sweepers, right? Particularly Dragonite and Cloyster, they mainly rely on setup to be threatening. So I'm sure he'll stick with that as usual. Blacephalon's just fantastic. That's a great special deck around the mix. Um, yeah, like, this team doesn't look that good to me on paper, I feel like, but I, I definitely think Alfie can make it work. I don't feel like he usually needs that much cohesion to make his team. He usually just identifies the most threatening things for uh, his opponents and just manages to tear through with those. So that should be enough for him. Um, I'll be interested if he does actually end up making more defensive application, but I just would expect more of the standard hyper offense. Um, Regigigas can certainly maybe get a sweep in there with Protect. That could be interesting. Um, yeah. Just don't let your guard down. Maybe you can use Landorus Theory to like leave with Stealth Rocks and Explosion. It's a good team. Again, it's kind of hard to judge this kind of team because it's like it's got threatening Pokemon. Does it have that much synergy? Kind of. They can see these guys wearing down each other's checks and counters a little bit, but it's not really so much about synergy as it is Alfie picking the threat that can most uh, take apart your team. So always be vigilant against a team like this. You can't let your guard down for even a turn, but maybe you can pull it out right if you stop those most threatening sweepers, and then he's just kind of stuck losing his. Uh, Pokemon to you, unless he does take that more defensive option, but we'll see. Next up, we have Pratham. Pratham? 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 I think it's Prat. I know it's Pratham. I'm just... It's a fun name to say. So, Manchester Ramoswines, we have Pratham. Um, this is... I'm going to say this is my favorite team. It's a good... This is the thing. It's a good team. Um, a lot of cohesion, right? I mean, there's no real thing you look at here and it's like, oh, that's a Hydra. That's a big threat. Because um, Heat Ran is just more of a utility glue Pokemon, right? And not that's not a criticism at all. Those are usually the most important kind of Pokemon. But um yeah. It's a team where I think he'll need to he'll need to be use skill, a lot of skill to pilot it, just in terms of prep and in terms of building, right? Because it's durable, like it's got things like wheezing and roam that are great for taking hits, removing hazards or whatever. Kudo can take a hit, save I can take a hit with a burn or whatever. But like they don't have durability really his only thing with reliable cover is Sableye. The rest have to rely on things like paint splitter rest. So he's not gonna be able to be that stally. So he'll have to get clever with how he times out his offense and his defense. Uh, he ranked maybe trap stall things like Kent, what's Ken Scott and killed is just a good breaker in general. Um, I don't think he should have a problem with hazard control. A lot of good defog or a lot of good hazard setters. So that's always nice. I think he's got a good advantage there. Good type diversity. Vanillix especially can take up maybe some of the bulky water types that might bother Keldeo or the grass types. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure what this specific strategy is looking at this team, so I maybe would say it's one of the weaker in the division, but I'm sure I'm just not understanding it fully. I don't think there's a lot of potential in just Heat Rank Kelty on their own, especially Rotomo, like throwing that in there. That's a great Firewater Grass core, so I'm sure Pratham will be able to find some success with this team. 
Next up, we have Aiden with the Coco Cons, aptly named for his Pokemon. I feel like Aiden took a little bit after his younger brother here, Alfie, with uh, trying to go full offense. Though, unlike with Alfie, it feels like Aiden's not really as setup reliant. It feels like Aiden's got a lot more of the kind of Pokemon that just hit hard, maybe hit and run, like Tapu Coco and Cinderace with U turn, or Superior who's kind of hitting you while it's setting up. Um, he's got more defensive backbone, kind of, but I don't feel like it'll. Maybe not the best defensive backbone. Quagsire, Piloswine. I mean, it's good, both good defensively, but they're both ground types. And then Volibee's good defensively, but again, it's like all those are kind of like can get hit by. I guess Piloswine resists ice, right? So not too bad, but um, I feel like there's not a lot of resistances to weaknesses among them. Like, what if, you know, a close combat user comes in when you're going to swing in like Tapu Koko? Um, but yeah, I still think it's a good team. Um, Alucha, especially with the Electric Seed, that's very threatening. Kangaskhan. You don't see a lot of Kangaskhan, but. Especially um, with Seismic Toss, Leo can do a lot, right? There's a reason it's banned. You can get sort of a Rocky Helmet, but at least there's still a lot it can do. Tapu Koko can just be Fandex with Combine. I think this team could get walled out a little bit, right? Um, not really overrun, just because the speed tiers are so impeccable. Easily, Aiden's got the best speed tiers in the league, just going from Tapu Koko down to whatever low doubt it goes down to. But the point is, from 130 down, it's well filled out. Um, you can maybe get walled out, right? Because some of these Pokemon have trouble, like, lasting long in matches. Um... So, and they can't overwhelm with their pure powers. Sometimes they get clever with, like, you know, Trick Haunter to take out a wall or, like, uh, maybe a crazy combine type of Coco. Still a fantastic team, so I'll be excited to see how that does. Um, type diversity is good. Man, I just, yeah, the defensive backbone isn't there, which is just kind of a shame because I feel like he kind of wasted some of his picks. Maybe it's more defensive things that could have just been more offense, but so those picks certainly still have a place. I'm just usually not good at playing that kind of team, but I'm sure Aiden can pull it off. Next up, we have Declan with the, the infamous Mike's Mikes. I feel, I feel like Declan's team's bad. His Pokemon are bad. I mean, they're not, they're not bad. No, I shouldn't say that. I mean, he won last season for Kermie, you know. I feel like Declan doesn't really plan too much around synergy. He just kind of drafts good things that go fairly well together and just kind of rolls with it. He's just like, ah, that, yeah, I'll do that. Um, yeah, and this team definitely finds the crack, uh, falls in that category, right? Where I feel like he does a thing where he maybe can kind of wall you for a little while, but then switch to offense, try to take you out. I feel like Declan tends to rely on a lot of surprise, and that this team can do that. Maybe he can hold you off with, like, Zapdos, Sableye, Mega, Registeel, more Stolly, but then he can, you know, go out to Beresquito, get some flip turns, maybe go to Kamo'o with the Z-Move sweep. So, yeah, there's no shortage of things he can do. I feel like, too, what Declan tends to do a lot is hold you off for a little bit, and he can certainly do that here better than ever with things like Zapdos and Registeel, Sableye, and then just, yeah, go to that hard offense and just start taking you out. And one thing I think Declan is pretty good at is drafting low tiers that serve a purpose. I feel like all his low tiers here serve a purpose. Air does with webs. Might need to give him some nice reasons from Dark. Kramer and Stunfisk can be a perennial for him, but they're also pretty effective and form a nice little core by themselves, covering each other's weaknesses. Um, yeah, so I don't really know what strategies to expect from Declan necessarily but um just that kind of very quick nimble mix of offense and defense that kind of change on a dime or just pull out some weird set you've never seen before like snap trap stun fisk or just weird stuff i, I would expect the unexpected here from mike's mike's as always all right last but certainly not least well maybe a little least <laughs> i mean you know we pulled him up from the silver division but listen he's the underdog everyone loves an underdog we've got gabe of the los ninos guapos lovely team Gabe does, above all, a fantastic job of drafting teams that look cool, and that's really half the battle. Um, so let's see, we've got Guard, Jump Charger, and Mega Y, classic uh, partnership there. You can just really melt the things that bother each other. Um, nice speed tiers going throughout. He can set up webs with Rabambi. And, you know, one thing with Gabe, I feel like sometimes is he uh, makes his decisions too quickly during the battle, but I think this team will actually help him a little bit there, because it can be very simple, very blitzy, clearly, because he can go screens with the Crimson Snarl and just maybe set up with Guard, Chomp, or Lily Gain, or some other such set up sleeper, Ship Cure, Toxtricity. Um, another good job with the low tiers, Boy Lord and Graplock serve a purpose, certainly. He doesn't have fighting and water types, so, you know, if they're not the best ones of those, if he really wants one, he can grab them. Some good defense with Kofagrigus and Tangrowth. You know, this isn't a defensive team, this is very clearly more of an offensive team. And reflecting that, both Kofagrigus and Tangrowth could just go offense if they wanted. They're the kind of Pokemon that can just go bulky offense. But, um, so it's nice that he has the option of a little defense, but, uh, yeah, this person, there's no real special tank here. I would expect, uh, more offense from... Los Ninos, Guapos, and Gabe more of the time. Hazard Control is... I think he got a little late in the game, especially if you're having something with Charizard and Mega Y. Like, he's got good setting with Garchomp, but you don't want to tether Garchomp to setting every time. And then, what's he got for removal, really? He's got... Does he have anything? Is there nothing? Does he have... Did Rainbow Bobby default? I don't... Okay, he's got a... Yeah, Gabe, uh, if you're listening to this, get, get Hazard removal. Guys, if you... 
you, if you're talking a game, tell him to get hazards. This is bad. He's got a charge for Mega. Why is there nothing to remove hazards? It's bad. I mean, he, he can't even put boots on it because it's a Mega. Somebody tell Gabe. Oh no. But um, you know, I still like this team. Whatever. You know. Listen, it's, it's got a good, a lot of good potential offensively, and uh, just get that hazard issue solved. There's nothing to remove the stealth rocks. Um, all right. So that concludes this portion of the power rankings. Normally, I would rank all the teams here, but especially since we're already doing the gold silver division, I don't really want to obsess more over oh, who's who got the best team more than uh, usual. So I'm just gonna skip that part. But um, yeah, we should have more to look forward to this season. Obviously, last season I didn't do any recaps or power rankings because people weren't picking their own Pokemon, right? So what's the point of judging people's teams that they didn't pick or like? People recapping would probably be like, yeah, I did what I could. I got messed up here because I didn't, because all my team was weak to ice or whatever. But um, you know, but this season we'll be doing, uh, I'll be doing recaps again. If there's a game you want to maybe recap with me, then reach out because I usually just pick pretty arbitrarily. I'm like, oh, that game looks cool. But uh, maybe if there's a game you want to talk about specifically, because I'm sure it's more interesting with two people talking than just me, then reach out and uh, I'm sure we can probably do that if nobody else has asked for that week. So yeah. Uh, schedule should be up tonight once all the trades are done. Maybe I'll just get that out around midnight. Um, let's see. Sorry if it sounds like I rushed through your part. Um, I actually had a recording issue, so around halfway through I had to re-record, and I kind of sped through because I didn't want to spend all day repeating myself. But all right, make sure to get your trades in, especially if you're Gabe and you need hazard removal. And remember to relentlessly ping Philip to get the rest of his picks in.